Hey everyone, my name is Tegu and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today we are going to be talking about Wayward Son. And I finished reading this over a month ago now. I wrote the review over a month ago. But it's very hard to film videos at uni. So we're doing it now. But first, I actually have the book here. This is uh, the Waterstones exclusive edition with these beautiful pages. So first we're going to have, we're going to review the actual book itself. So. First of all, yes, pages beautiful. They match the suit. This is actually one of the nicest hardbacks I have, I think. And also, I, are these spoilers? This book's been out for some time now, but we're gonna look anyway. I don't know if, like, how much of this is exclusive to Waterstones, or if they basically do the same version, make it exclusive to like, what's the American Waterstones? It's like Barnes and Noble. But, yeah. Yes. So this is a very beautiful actual book. And I appreciate it so much when hardbacks aren't just like, I'm trying to, I don't know. Like, Legendary and Finale, they're somewhere. But there's a difference between hardbacks that just go to make it look pretty, such as, for example, Finale, where it's all very shiny and nice, and ones that are just, they still actually fit the book, and like, it links back to the cover, and stuff like that. And I'm literally just rambling. We're we gonna talk about Wayward Sun. So I've been anticipating Wayward Sun since I finished Carry On many, years ago like 2016 and when i got the book this book i was so anxious about reading it that i just didn't because i was like trying to delay the inevitable and then i read it i gave in i read it and where it's done is exactly what i wanted and more from a sequel to carry on i wrote in my notes for my blog that I have no self-control when it comes to buying books and limited edition things. So if you give me a limited edition book, I, I want it, I have it. <laughs> okay, so this story is a road trip, literally there, on the road trip across America. It's full of chaos and humour and so many domestic scenes and casual magic and bloody kisses and intense friendship and everything that I want more of, pretty much just in YA books. Give me drama and chaos and friendship and I have no words. It's just, it's full of, one way of describing it is that it's full of all the best fan fiction tropes, but it's written in a way that makes them feel more realistic and beautiful and heartbreaking. Like when I talk about Carry On, it's, I think the tone of that does read as a fan fiction in many ways. But Wayward Son, instead of it still being like a Harry Potter fan fiction or a Carry On fan fiction, it's its completely own entity. And it still has those fan fiction elements, but it's written in a way my forehead's very overexposed. <laughs> that help? Probably not. But yeah, it takes the fan fiction fan fiction tropes and flips it and makes it completely its own in a way that is I I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So yeah, Carry On did feel like a fan fiction in many ways, but Wayward Son is completely separate. And it like tears out your heart. It doesn't quite put it back together at the end, which I'm okay with. And in comparison to Carry On, this review is going to have a lot of comparison to Carry On, just because it's a good reference point. Because they are sequel, they are the same series, but they're so different that it will make a lot of sense for people who have read the first one to like know how it's different. So where Sun feels a lot more grown up and mature. It reads almost as a new adult rather than young adult. So Carry On is, you know, fun, fluffy, doesn't take itself too seriously and reads a lot more like a fan fiction, as I've said many times already in just this video. Wayward Sun has a completely different tone. It's a lot more serious and it focuses a lot more on the characters and their struggles. And, you know, after the aftermath of what happened in Carry On, that is something that's very essential to see how like they're coping with those situations. 
and it gives the characters in the world more time to like fully flesh themselves out and expand past the fanfiction stage and it brings them to life in a way that I didn't think was possible so I would have thought that you know carry on that was as much development as the characters get but I think part of like it really more like a new adult thing is that these characters are adults now and they've gone through the trauma so they're although the character itself is the same they're still changed so much Wayward Son is a lot more emotional than Carry On, but I still wanted more. Like, if you were going to be, like, dramatic and chaotic and emotional and heartbreaking, go all out. So, in this one, Snowbaz, Snowbaz, they're very fractured. Not, like, fully broken up, but on the way. <laughs> Simon is still very damaged from losing his magic, and he's not coping at all. Like, what's the first line of this book? That's the epilogue. Yeah, the first line of the book is literally, Simon Snow is lying on the sofa. That's the sign of a broken man. <laughs> and because of how Simon's coping from the aftermath of Carry On, there's so much relationship angst and it tugs on my heartstrings and it hurts, but we're okay with that. But this book focused more on the action of their adventure rather than unpacking the emotions. So... You know, I would have wanted this dealt with in this book, but as there is a third book in the series on its way, I hope this all gets acknowledged. Like, deal with the relationship angst. They were technically kind of, this is probably a spoiler, but they were technically pretty much broken up through this entire book. And you're not going to acknowledge that? And when I was writing this for you, I felt like it had gone forever. I could go on and just analyse every single little thing about the book and say everything I wanted to. But I think if we're focusing on just the essentials, I think one of the main things I missed out would be about Penny and Agatha's character development and their own individual storylines in this book. Because Agatha is still in it a lot, but her storyline is pretty much completely separate from the others until the end. And there is a lot I would want to say about that. But that would be it. it's a whole new video. It's going to start a YouTube series where I just talk about Rainbow Rowell books and break down the characters. But yeah, about those two characters specifically, there's a lot I want to say, but I don't know how. Like, I can't still wrap my head around it fully and put my thoughts into coherent words. But I'll end on this. I've never anticipated a third book in a series as much as I anticipate any way the wind blows. Rainbow Rowell owns my soul. I gave this book five stars. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. In the comments below, if you've read Wayward Sun, let me know in just give me your thoughts. I'm, it's been probably a month or two since I read it and I'm still processing. I don't think I've read, I've like read another book since then because I can't. And also, if you are still anticipating any, is it called Anywhere the Wind Blows? Like, what do you want from it? I want the relationship to be sorted out. But like, ideally you'd want like a happy ending, but we know that's not going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.